Okay, this is Brian again with another um, modding tutorial video for the Spark Editor. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to be doing a couple new things with the map editor in relation to dynamic prompts and um, triggering cinematics. Um, and it's going to look something like this. Nice. So as you see there, I... Well, you probably didn't notice, but I hit the use button and it triggered a uh, cinematic and it also triggered the dynamic prop for the door here to open and then close. Um, actually, it closed on its own, but it stays up because of something that we did in the map editor. So uh, this is a new feature and it's uh, pretty powerful, I think, for mods, so it would be really cool to use. and. Um, do all sorts of fun stuff like make a countdown timer with the gorge in it and uh, yeah so I will go and show you how to do that in the next segment of this okay sorry I had to cut out there because uh, apparently I was recording at the wrong resolution so I, uh, I'm gonna need to re-record this part but basically um, what we're we'll doing is we're going to be going into the cinematic editor and the map editor um, to yeah, load that uh, countdown timer on there. And then we're also going to be working a bit in the viewer and the animation graph to change the um, model compile file so that it works with uh, this new feature I'll be showing off for the button um, feature that Brian added into the last patch. Um, we also just recently patched, because this is uh, the day after I recorded the first part, um, and in this last patch we did the holiday update, we also have the um, Steam sale, let me actually pop that up, um, we have a flash sale going on right now, 60% off, doing pretty good, uh, top number three right now, that's cool, um, but also in the, in the patch we uh, released something new. This is actually pretty exciting for me because it's pretty much what I have already released on my own Dropbox, but now it's on Launchpad. If you select this button, uh, it will open up and you'll see that there is a zip file of model source included here, as well as the sound source um, fmod project. So you can actually uh, get all of that stuff now currently just straight from Launchpad. And uh, that's really cool. Um, so getting back on topic with this video, um, we'll open up the cinematic editor here. And what I want to do is create a new cinematic for the countdown, starting from scratch, so I can show you guys what um, what I had to do. And uh, first thing you typically want to do is set a level. So you can either go into scene and set level, or um, I use this house button here and it opens up a file browser and you want to browse to the maps and I do have yeah we'll use cinematic tutorials I think that's actually shipped with the game so uh, if not you can create your own little room um, and have it lit and th that'll be good to show off your cinematics in a lit environment because uh, otherwise it's pretty much in pitch black and it's very difficult to see. So I'm um, waiting for that to load. Um, usually it's pretty quick. Okay, there we go. And you see here, this is a cinematic editor. I don't think I've done any other videos on this, but uh, so we will kind of go over the basics of the cinematic editor as I move along here. Um, this right here is the main viewport. It's got the origin point here with the X, Y, and Z markers. and um, on the right we have a uh, properties window for everything that we have selected and below it we have an events window for um, uh, adding sound and other cinematic events to your cinematic scene. Um, on the bottom left here I've put the preview window and uh, this is just sort of a way to see it without all of the extra gizmos in the way um, and you can move around it by holding right click and using the mouse to look around and WSD to move just basically like in the game 
And then in this window we have the curve editor, which is also good for selecting what is in the scene and um, being able to edit its properties and its animations with uh, pretty much a normal curve editor. And last thing is above here is the time slider. So it shows you that I have uh, 100 frames in this scene right now. And I th what I want to do is add um, extend this to about 150 frames. So at 30 frames per second, that's going to be 5 seconds. So now we have uh, 150 frames. And uh, we can scrub through it by, you know, just holding down the middle part here and moving it back and forth. We can take it forward one frame or back one frame with those buttons. And then we can also just play it, and this will play it back at a normal playback rate for 30 frames per second. Uh, we can also restart the playback to the beginning and that's pretty much all the buttons for the main viewports and then we have all the menus and other buttons. Uh, right now we're really just going to go through a couple of these. Um, first thing I want to do is create an actor uh, and this is basically just any model um, whether it's animated or not if it's just a prop uh, anything like that will be loaded here. And now that I have that selected, we have uh, new feature, new things here on the properties window. Uh, the name of the prop, the uh, visibility, if it's visible or not. Uh, it's base time, basically how many seconds in this it uh, will start doing what you tell it to. Um, the origin, which is currently off-center, so I'm just going to center that by making these zero. And the angle shows the roll, pitch, and yaw of the model, and uh, that's good. All of these things can be animated. And then the name of the model, uh, which I would load here, the scale, which can also be animated or changed here, and whether it's collidable or not, which currently isn't working exactly right, but it is still uh, an option and something we'll be working on. You can also adjust pose parameters here if there are any, but uh, there are currently not because I don't have any models selected yet. So now I need to browse and find the model I want. And I'm looking for a prop in refinery. And I actually don't remember what it is called because there's a lot of props in this folder. So we'll see. I think it's uh, Big Pipe decals number one through four. So we'll select number uh, four first and move the viewport to show where it's pointing. And yeah, that's what I want. Cool. So um, I'm going to need one, two, and three as well. So I'm just going to copy and paste this a few times. Oh, I don't want to rotate yet. Uh, let's just paste and change this one, two, three. Oops, did I not paste that? Uh, paste, okay. Copy, paste, and change this one, two, two. Paste, change this one to one. I want to change the names of it as well to match the number so I know which one's which. This one is two, so we'll change that to two. Oh, two. Uh, this one is four. Let's change that to four. Four. So this one's three. All right. Now that that's set up, uh, I'm going to want to put these in their starting position. So I want four to be there. I want three to be rotated up. We're going to use angles here to change the pitch to 90. Uh, let's use 270. And 2 will go to pitch 180. 1 will be pitch 90. Okay. So now, as you can see, I have 4, 3, Two, one. Now it's basically a big circle of these numbers. 
and the origin is off center to basically the center of the pipe that it would normally be uh, added to. Uh, that way it's easy to add it to the pipe uh, by just matching the origin of the pipe to the origin of this decal. Um, but um, it's also good for what we're doing because it would be rotating from that point. Um, so what I need to do next is animate these. And we're going to be animating each of these individually because you can't really select more than one model at a time in the cinematic editor, but uh, it's a little tedious, but it's not that hard. So we'll just select, start with four, we'll turn on record keyframes. This is pretty much like how you would animate in Max. Um, we want to record keyframes, so anything that I do to it will create a new keyframe on whatever I am at in the time slider. So first thing we need to do is start a base keyframe for where it's at. And then at 29, we're going to keep it there. And then at 30, which is one second, I'm going to rotate it to 90. And then rotate it to 180 at 2 seconds. 70 at 3 seconds and leave it there and then so for number 1 we're going to do the same thing rotate it to 180 key 270 and then add Seventy key uh, three sixty. All right, and then to same thing key. Uh, we'll do two seventy. My crap. <laughs> Did it again. All right, key there, and then here, 270. Key there, and then here, 360. And then here, key, and then at 90. We'll go to negative 90. Oh, oh we'll, just, we'll just go to 90. <laughs> that should work just fine. And then um, this one's been done. Top one has not, so we'll do this one. Key thirty origin ninety. Wait, what am I doing? Um, no, it needs to rotate. Okay, 360. And then 59, 60 will be 90. Key, and then at 90, we're going to go to 180. All right, so now uh, I think my countdown is pretty much ready. I just need to play it back. See, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. And then at zero, what I'm going to want them to do is disappear. So now we're going to change the visibility. The visibility is a little weird because the first time that you change it, it sets one key. It won't set a key any other time if you're hitting the key button or anything else. So we'll set a key here for false. We want it to be true at frame zero. So by doing that, now at frame zero it's true. And then it changes at frame 120. So I'll do it for all of these. Frame 120. It's false. True. This one. False. True. And lastly, I think this guy. No, he's good. He's good. Wait, are they all good? 
Oh, clearly this one is not good. One needs to be done. Okay, so false and then true. So now they should all be done. Three, two, one, and then they disappear. Perfect. So then what I want to have happen at 120 is I'm going to add the gorge model. So again, we'll just create actor. I'm going to center it. And then add the model for the gorge. And since I'm using my mod loaded um, on the launch pad, it should find gorgles. And I'm going to unselect this so I'm not actually adding keys here. And we're just going to move him sort of in the center of this scene. Yeah, we kind of wanted to match up with the numbers. So he's going to move there. And then what we want is we want him to be disappeared. So we will turn the core keyframes on. And we'll have him be false at frame 0. And then at frame 120, he'll be true. As soon as all these dis numbers disappear, he'll show up. Bam. But don't really want him to sit in there. So we're going to add... Um, yeah, we're going to want to add the uh, animation. So I need to add an event. Play animation. So this is, yeah, where you would add an event. You can add a sound to him, uh, animation, or a cinematic. So we'll add a sa oh, yeah, animation first. And we want that to be taunt. So he'll send animation at this frame. Uh, any frames before that, he's, we wouldn't be playing any animations unless I add another animation event. Uh, but afterwards, yeah, so at, at 120 he should start and play that. Moving these blue buttons around is actually a little buggy, so um, typically you might need to just delete the event and make a new one if you want to change the timing on those um, animations. But uh, Otherwise, I think I want him. Seems to go on for a little bit longer, so we're going to change this to 180 just to get his full animation. And then when it hits the end of the cinematic, it's going to um, basically delete itself, so um, everything will then disappear at that point. So now I have that. We have a animation. We're going to also want to add sounds. So um, let's do a timer sound. So with the gorge select, well I guess I can pretty much select any of these and add the sound event to it. Uh, I'm going to select, yeah, the gorge. We'll put gargles here. And enter. Add sound events to him. And to do that, you just load the sound package, which is in the sound folder here, ns2.fev. Then I'm going to use alien, and yeah, this is basically just list all the sounds. Um, alien, commander, and let's just pick drop, uh, di drop 2d. Yeah, you can play it back there. Just make sure it's the sound that you want, so I think that's the one I'm going to go with. And hit OK. And um, actually, uh, I did realize with other, we were doing this earlier, that putting it on frame zero doesn't work. So I actually need to move that to frame one. And yeah, like I said, that will cause problems. So I'm going to have to delete it and redo it um, at frame one. But that's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, basically just what I mean is that when I play it back in the actual game, it won't play any sounds that I put on frame zero. Not a big deal. Uh, sounds, I'd say I just got to do this for each second. Um, sound. Sound. Oh, uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. That's not right at all. Uh, s sound. Alien. Command.
Commander Di. Boom. All right, let's play that back. Sweet. And I also want to add a sound to the gorge, so we'll do that. Sound event. Um, sounds fav. Alien. And in the gorge, I'm going to find taunt. And that should be that. Uh, one more time. Awesome. Alright, so the last thing I want to add is a light. Um, there's two lights. There's the point light and the spotlight. I think I want to add a spotlight. And I'm going to want to rotate that. Um... First, I'm going to save it. I'm going to write over countdown.cinematic. <laughs> it's typically good to back up your cinematics because this uh, cinematic editor can cause problems and sometimes crash, so you just want to make sure that you have uh, the latest ones set up or uh, saved uh, as often as possible. All right, so I'm just going to move this light back, and as you can see here, it's, it's really bright. It's casting a shadow. Actually, that's not casting a shadow. The scene's casting a shadow. But uh, it's pretty much what I want. Except for I want it to start off as red. So we're going to change it to red. And then we're actually going to animate the color of the light to change to yellow and then green as this progresses. So at frame 29, I'm going to keep it at red. And then frame 30, I'm going to change it to yellow. So now three, two, and one will be yellow, and then at 19, yeah, we'll key it at yellow, and then we'll at when the gourd shows up, we'll make it green. So now it's got a cool animated light. Other things on the properties for lights, you can change uh, its intensity, uh, its radius, which is just how much of the area around it will be affected by the light. Uh, you can tell it to cast shadows or not. Um, shadows are expensive, so it's good to not use it all the time. But this is a very minimal effect, and plus they won't be doing much anyway during this period of time. So I'll, I'll put shadows on. And you can even add atmospheric density if you want. And that's expensive. Um, and then you can hide the light as well. You can change the inner cone and outer cone. I think I might want to do that now. We kind of actually, I just want it to be like a, a solid circle. So we'll, we'll make this actually, make that 30, and then I'll make this 30. See how that looks. Yeah, we want to make sure that it's hitting the numbers. And it'll probably also show up behind it a bit, but that's okay. All right. So going back here, we have four. And I just noticed that those thing changes I made are actually animated. And I could go fix that, but right now I really don't want to. But you can see in the uh, curve editor here, if I select inner cone or outer cone, you'll see that the changes that I made over uh, in here, you notice that like it's starting at, this is the outer cone. It starts at 30, and it is animated to 45 at this frame. So if I wanted to, I could just delete that, and then it would actually animate. But, uh, yeah, actually, I probably should. Um, so there we go. That's just how we you want to use the curve editor to fix problems. You could also move this around in the curve editor, and it will affect the world. Um, you can do that for the radius or the intensity as well. Um, that's how you can make, like, a flickering light by having... Uh, the intensity change, um, lots of fun stuff. 
and turn that back off. And now, with everything I want, this for the first video, but I think I'm going to try and see if I can make it look like he's hovering on a cloud just for fun. Um, we're going to add a emitter. And emitters are what we use um, for basically all of our particle effects um, in the game. And they're also used for some environment effects. Um, this is actually just the default, and it actually kind of works as a cloud. So if I have him kind of like, um, we're going to need to hide it until he shows up. So we're going to do this again, where we uh, have visibility set to false at frame 0, frame 120, and frame on. See how he's kind of like on this puff of smoke. So we could change uh, the particle that it's using. Uh, right now it's just using the default particle. Uh, you can change it if it's going to be something that's just an instant burst of uh, particles or if it's going to be releasing particles over time. You can change how many particles it's releasing. Um, all this fun stuff. And um, how you want it aligned. This is going to be camera alignment is typically the best. Um, velocity, you can change all of the opacity and these all these features can be animated as well um, but I actually am not gonna mess with that for this video I just wanted to add a little cloud briefly emitters there <laughs> that's gonna be horrible <laughs> but we'll see all right so I'm gonna save this again as um, yeah we're right over that countdown thing and I think I don't think I actually have Builder running. Do I? Oh, I do. Okay, great. So now it's actually built it into my output folder. And that should actually be accessible in the editor now. So we'll go ahead and switch to the editor. And I could probably close this. We'll go ahead and close the cinematic editor and open up the editor now. And in here we will see um, my map load that up and there we go yeah I guess I did have it backwards <laughs> but I can rotate that it's fine so what we're gonna do is actually delete this cinematic entity and then these three green dots and I'll go over what those are when I add those back in but yeah, this is basically how my map looked like before. And what we're going to do is add that cinematic to my map. So the way you would do that is create an entity cinematic. And then place the model in there. And I think this is supposed to be like a little camera recording thing that kind of looks like a Mac. I don't really know. Actually, yeah, I think you can't even see what it is because it's so transparent. But uh, yeah, it's just this orange triangle or box thing. We're going to move that into position. But first thing we need to do is, with the select tool, add load my cinematic file. So I'm going to go into cinematics, environments, gorge race, countdown, because that's where I put it. And there we go. Now it's upside down and backwards. Oh no, it's just backwards. So we'll move that into position I want it to. and It'll actually play the cinematic in there for you so you'll see what it looks like uh, pretty much what it'll finally look like in the game. And we'll move that right about here in the middle of the door. And of course we should rotate that. Uh, 360. Oh, that's 185. Yeah, 180. <laughs> and there we go. We'll just move it right in the middle of the door here. And back a little bit. Three, two, one. Sweet. 
I don't want to see how that cloud looks. <laughs> Alright. Right now the door is in the way, but that will hopefully close uh, when we want it to. So, just I had to take a sip there. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, what we need to do is not have this going all the time. If we look at the settings here, it's it's set to loop. And what we want it to do is not be loop. We want it to not repeat at all. Um, but we do want it to play on a message. And this means that basically what's happening here, and Brian explained it pretty well um, to me, um, is that the first thing we need is another entity. And we're going to call it I will find the button emitter and place that near my door. And um, basically, what this is doing is sort of transmitting a signal, kind of like a radio. And if we look at here, we have the channel. So I can change the channel to, you know, uh, a particular number, and that will be. Uh, the number that it emits on and I probably don't need that high of a number uh, I'll just do five and it will emit a message on that channel whenever it is used so listen entity must respond to this message uh, yeah so it'll, it'll send that a message on that channel and then your cooldown time is the amount of seconds to wait before the button is pressed again so I'll just make that uh, 10 seconds and the emitter message will be um, open so other things that emit messages are props and um, yeah I think just props uh, other things that can receive messages but right now props and the button emitter uh, send messages so this prop actually has a bunch of tags in it and those are all being transmitted on uh, channel one so um, if I had a uh, yeah I'll just go back to the cinematic here what we want let's just go ahead and show you what we want is we want this cinematic to play on message open and we want it to listen to the same channel as the button uh, but if if, like, for example, there was some tag in the um, animation for this door, it would be transmitting on channel 1, and I could name a cinematic uh, based on that, the tag in the animation, and it would trigger if it, whenever it plays it in, in the animation. <laughs> we'll, we'll demonstrate that in a minute, uh, actually. Uh, because we'll be adding tags using the animation graph but uh, basically what's happening yeah like I said is this is a button transmitting a message on channel 5 and the message is open and this is listening to channel 5 and when it has open it'll play on message and then it will not repeat alright um, so that is actually pretty pretty cool so the button uh, the way it works is that in game, once the game is started, you'll be able to press it and you'll get a prompt um, like E to use. And you can place this anywhere in in any level and you can have a prop to sort of indicate that you want to press this particular area. But right now I just have the center of the door to do it. And um, the other thing that we want to do um, well first of all we should probably just try this out and see how it works so I'm going to save the level make sure it builds and then we're going to go into launchpad and run the game and you know let's take a minute currently have a new mod loaded just for this particular season uh, the gunslinger x Mix aliens number one mod and we'll see that when I get into War Trace. So, uh, more mods I like to 
I like to see, uh, especially, you know, holiday related mods. So, loading up. Steve's been acting funny actually lately, so I might not run, um, which is a shame and really <laughs> makes it hard to do this video. But yeah, I don't think it's going to run. So I think I'll just go into more explanation on how to um, you know, accomplish what I'm doing, and then hopefully by the time I'm done, we'll be able to test it in the game. So let's close this window here. It won't let me close. So <laughs> that's fantastic. And we'll just end the game and come back to that. All right. So going back, we'll actually just go back into the map editor and check out Gorgeous Underground again. And next thing we want to do is actually so what we need is we need this door to instead of going down on its regular loop where it goes down every three minutes, we want it to go down after this button has been pressed after a certain amount of seconds. And only then. So what I'm gonna do is add a new entity that uh, Brian has also just included, and this one's called Prop Dynamic Animator. So I have a dynamic prop, and now I have a dynamic prop animator. And what this is, we select it, we'll see that it has a listen channel, and animate on message, and so we're going to change the channel to 5, we're going to animate on message open, so that it will respond to the button press. You can also change the radius, but like the radius is pretty big. We can make that smaller if you want, because it just needs to encompass this, uh, the button. And then um, has input name and input value. And input name are what we use in the animation graph to, um, yeah, basically trigger animations. Um, so what we need to do then is go and check out the animation graph in the viewer uh, and we're going to find my desktop gorgery source model source props gorgery underground uh, oh yeah that's right it has to do the built version so gorge race models props gorgery underground start gate and then we want to uh, go to the m sorry the animation graph and open Stargate animation graph and I've actually already made the change that I need to do and um, just for the purpose of saving time here uh, I will just explain what I did instead of redoing it but uh, basically what we have here is a new input uh, this actually is an input we can ignore um, I don't, we don't really need that, but we went over that in the last video. Um, in this input, I have open, which is the message that was is being received here. Um, that actually is not, that that's actually, the message is irrelevant. What we have here is a new input name, and we're going to change the input name to open, and input value to be true yeah we want input open to be true uh, so basically what that means is that when it receives this message on channel 5 it will change the input value of open to true so we'll look in the animation graph and notice that I have a new input and it's a basically a true or false boolean input which uh, to do that you just add an input um, select boolean and then type in the name of that um, but like I said, we have that, so we'll just leave it there. And then we have here at the start of the animation, we have 
animation equals animate open equals true. So if open equals true, we'll enter into this node, and then it will um, basically hold on the up animation. And what I've done is I slowed it down the speed to 0.3 and remove the speed change from the model compile file that we went over in the last video and this way it'll actually stay in the up position for um, a few seconds and then it will play the go down animation so that's basically just to delay the start of it so that when it receives the signal it will wait till the countdown's done and then go down at zero and uh, allow you to start the race. Apparently I have two versions of Gorge Race open, is that right? Um, yeah, so we're gonna close this one and keep this one and what we need to do is so basically what that, yeah, that's what that's gonna do is have it open uh, by going down and then at down and then we want it to say open equals false we want to need to be able to switch this back so what we need is a tag um, that's going to trigger um, output from the model and trigger the another prop dynamic animator to change open to false so that's what we're going to do we've got tag here called close so when it enters this node after it's played the down animation it's starting to play go up it'll emit close and then in the editor we're going to add a new I'm just going to copy paste oops, paste and change this one to listen to channel 1 which is the channel of the dynamic prop I have here so channel 1 and it will listen for the message close and then it will change the input name of open to the value of false and now um, move it there that's fine and now that should work so when it hits close it'll emit um, that on channel one this one will receive it and then change the output uh, sorry the input name of open to false and basically it's just searching for all dynamic props in this range so it'll get uh, our door and pretty much only the door um, it won't affect the cinematic file at all so that's fine um, so now that should actually work and it should only go up and down when I push the button and now we're gonna save this and it should be pretty much good to go um, we're gonna test one more time see if steam is working and save the animation graph I actually don't need to because I didn't change anything um, I had changed it before but that was in my previous playthrough of this recording and <laughs> um, now we should just run the game again okay we're back in the game and um, you can see that I have uh, the Christmas mod uh, I think it's Gunslinger's Alien Xmas number one installed, it's got the hive and the uh, harvester is all cool and the snow, it's very bright and also we've got our dynamic we've got our button yeah, there we go. Um, that is it's all working. So sweet. That's pretty much it for this video. So thank you for, um, thank yeah, thanks for for watching this whole thing. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And hope it helped you guys with your mods. And um, yeah, have a good holiday. And I'll see you guys.